Okay, so this is the video cast solution for the exam three review problem seven. Okay, in this problem, we're given a dynamic load. So there's a, a capacitive load here and we're wondering about rise time and fall time. And there's also a load, a DC, you know, a resistive load connected to the output of an inverter as well. So we're given parameters RP, the on resistance for uh, the P channel of a, of a MOSFET transistor, and RN, the on resistance for the N channel. Okay, so in part A, we're looking at the equivalent circuit where VN is an ideal low. Okay, because it's an inverter on an ideal low, we're trying to push the output high. Okay. So before we get started, let's take a look at this resistor combination where we have the output, and there's a resistor connected between the output and BCC, the output and ground. Okay, so we know that this this has an equivalent circuit it can be turned into a Thevenin. Okay, so, so you should be able to do that quickly. The answer is this becomes 1200 in parallel with 800. And then you have a voltage divider to get the Thevenin voltage. That would be 800 times the supply voltage VCC divided by 1200 plus 800. Okay, so when I calculate this parallel resistance, I get 480. And when I calculate this voltage divider, I get uh, two volts. Okay, so in part A, we're looking at the high state because the input's a low and it's an inverter. All right, so we said RN, I'm sorry, RP, the on resistance for the P channel should be 200 ohms. Okay, then the N channel is going to be greater than 10 to the 6 ohms. Then we have our output, and across our output we have the capacitive load, which was 50 picofarads. And then we have our Thevenin equivalent circuit, which is 480. And then Two volts. Okay, so that's five volts here. So that's the answer for part A. Okay, so while we have part A, we go to look at part B. In part B, we're trying to find the steady state output value where Vn is an ideal low. So we already have the equivalent circuit. So let's go ahead and look at the output value. All right, so what we know that we need to do is we need to take this circuit and open up the capacitor. Because the capacitor is going to act like an open circuit at DC, and we need to calculate the output voltage under that condition. Okay, and so <clears throat> very little current is going to go through here, so we can assume all of the current is sourced from the device. Here's the current I, and we can figure that out because this is two volts, all right, this is five volts, and this is just a at this point. This is just series resistance, okay? So what, what I know is that I is gonna be five minus two, the voltage across the series resistance, divided by the sum of the resistances, so that in this case would be 680. 
all right? And then we just write a little voltage divider equation and we get that V out is going to be 5 minus 200 times I. Okay, so we already know I, we plug that in here, and we can solve for the steady state output. So in this case, I get it to be 4.12 volts. Okay. All right, so there's the solution to part A. All right. So for part B, I'm sorry, for A and B, this is part B. Okay. So this is the answer for part B. All right, so for part C, all right, in part C, we're trying to drive the output to a low because the input is high and it's an inverter chip. So that means this resistance should be big because it's effectively disconnected. The in channel resistance should be small. So we're given that's 100 ohms. Here's our output, here's our capacitor. And then here's our seven and equivalent circuit. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so there's the answer for part C. All right. For part D, we're looking at the output after it's switched to this condition for a very long time. So as before, what we do is we need to open the capacitor and look at what the output voltage, you know, the output voltage and the capacitor voltage are the same. All right. So in this case, it's a little loop here because no current's gonna go this way. So it's just a little single loop circuit. And so I can get that by a voltage divider, right? It's going to be 2 times 100 divided by 100 plus 480, right? So I calculate that voltage to be 0 0.345. All right. Next, going back to the top. All right, we've now done part C. Parts D and E, we're looking for, oh, I'm sorry, we did D. All right, we found the steady state output. Now we need to find the rise time and the fall time by approximating that with um, the RC time constant. Okay, all right, I should have put TF here. All right, so, which circuit would you use for rise time? Well, rise time, we end up with the output being high. All right, so we use the circuit where the output voltage tends to be, you know, goes to, towards something that's high. Okay, so that would be the circuit from case A. All right. All right, so the circuit from case A, our equivalent is 200 ohms in parallel with 480. All right, so to see that go up here, remember we turn off the sources. All right, so we turn off the two volt source, we turn off the five volt source. So let me change those colors. Turn these off, so that means they would be shorted. Okay, you turn this off. This 5 volt off, that would mean you would short this. And then you look in for the equivalent resistance. Okay, so the equivalent resistance seen at that point is just 200 in parallel with 480. Okay, then we know C is 50 picofarads. And the time constant that we can use to approximate the rise time is just our equivalent times C 
when I calculate that, I get seven point zero six nanoseconds. Okay. And then if we were looking, you know, this would be for rise time. If we were looking for fall time, fall time we're looking for the circuit where we end up low. Okay, so that was the circuit from part B. All right, so if you look at the circuit from part B, we're looking at the feminine equivalent resistance when we turn off this source, and then we short it. Okay, so that's going to be 100 in parallel with 480. Okay, so I get that parallel combination to be about 82.75 ohms. I can calculate the time constant tau by just C times R equivalent. And for the second case, for the fall time, I get that to be about 4.14 nanoseconds. Okay, so those are the answers for part E and F.